for spending your Friday morning with me. I know there are a million other things that you would could possibly be doing, and I appreciate you spending about an hour or so of your time with me this morning. Uh, monitoring the, let me formally introduce myself before we get going here. Uh, my name, for those who don't know me, my name is Kimberly Brown Harden, and I am the Northwest Regional Coordinator here at the Indiana State Library. Uh, we're going to go over a few federal government websites that will cover a variety of topics and hopefully these sites will be useful when working with children and young adults. Um, with me today is Angela Dubinger. She is the children's consultant here at the Indiana State Library. Good morning. And she will be monitoring the chat box. So if you have any questions, please, as we're going through um, the webinar, please enter the questions into the chat box and we'll have time at the end for discussion and questions. And again, I want to thank you for joining me today. And so let's get started. Here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about how federal documents are used, how they're useful for, you, for your patrons or you. We'll discuss a few mobile apps. We'll also give a few examples of federal documents uh, in print and just examples of federal documents in general here at the Indiana State Library. We'll talk about some websites. We'll talk about some other notable websites and then there'll be time for questions. So now, how do you use federal documents? Well, federal documents, they're more than just dusty old books in the library. Mm -hmm. Federal documents are books, comic strips, they're posters, CD-ROMs, board games, newsletters. Board just, games? Yes, board ah. games. Board games, yes. And federal documents can help you buy a car, help you purchase a home, help you get student loans, find a job, help you to live a healthy lifestyle, can help you save and spend money, and other ways to help you and your family. So as you can see, federal documents are a part of everyday life. The earlier you start teaching kids about them and how they can be used, the more comfortable that they'll feel about using federal documents and using the government sites as adults. The most important thing I want you to uh, come out of this today is that government websites are secure for the most part, and they're also reliable and authoritative. As you know, I mean, in this day and age, any, any site can get hacked, but for the most part, uh, the federal sites are safe and they're safe for your kids to use. So that's the most important thing I would like for you to come out with this today. So on the left, this is what we typically think of when we think of federal documents. Something very old, something very old, very stern, very formal. This is an example. This is a federal land patent um, in, from 1824. That's how we typically look at federal documents. Now on the right today, federal documents and federal information, we can find them on laptops. We can get it on a laptop. We can find them on smartphones, just about everywhere. So we are definitely coming to an age where things are electronic and people want their federal documents and they want anything as soon as they can get it. So. Yeah. So here's just a few examples of the mobile apps. And as you know, they're definitely the future of government documents. So here's some examples. USA Jobs, the CDC, which is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Medicare, Department of Homeland Security, Presidential Documents, and Recall.gov. You can access federal documents, you can apply for a job, you can search government services, and sign up for medical insurance with the ease and the convenience of your smartphone. Young adults as well as adults will find this most helpful. So now let's take a look at some print documents here at the Indiana State Library or and some other examples of federal documents that you would be able to find here at our library. For example, activity books for kids. On the left, 
is a junior paleontologist activity book, and this is published by the National Park Service Department of Interior. On the right is also an activity book, and it is published by the Department of Agriculture. That's cool. You could use those books for a lot of different programming yeah, ideas. You sure too. can, yeah. On the inside, this is from the junior paleontologist book. Um, here's a game that teaches you about fossils and how fossils are created. And like Angela said, you can definitely use uh, a lot of this stuff for different programming ideas for your kids, for your libraries. Absolutely. Hey, um, it says Julia t just typed that she lost sound. Uh, Julia, uh -oh. you might want to look in the note box below on the bottom left. Um, can everybody hear us okay? Yep. I think everybody else can hear us fine. Um, you might double check Julia and look at the setup wizard and see if there's something going on. Can everyone else hear us okay? Okay. Great. All right, here's another example. Uh, most people don't think of federal documents, but as a puzzle. On the left, these are some puzzle, puzzles that were done by NASA about the uh, space program. Cool. And on the right, also published by NASA, is a poster. So, and also, as I mentioned earlier, I couldn't uh, get a picture of it, but there's a really cool space game uh, also created by NASA where you has the game pieces, dice, everything. I wanted to play around with it while I was at work, but they wouldn't let me do it on the desk. Oh, but, man. But yeah, those are examples of federal documents as well. There's also, you can learn about music, and you can also learn about art. Cool. So again, these are just a variety of things that you can find here at the State Library. And just to kind of keep in mind of what federal documents can and can't be and what they look like. And again, I just want you to challenge yourself today to know that federal documents have evolved and they are continuing to evolve and how you access them. All right, so let's talk a little bit about websites. Um, again, these are just hopefully a few that you will find helpful there's just way too much information out there to cover everything, but hopefully these will give you a sense of a variety of things that you can find out there with a variety of topics that will be helpful to you. So the first one we're going to start with is kids.gov, and this is the main page. It's for a variety of age groups and it has a variety of topics. There's a section for parents and teachers if you want to get email updates. This site has interesting facts, games, and resources for a variety of age groups. And it's a one-stop shop for a lot of topics. As you can see down at the bottom, you can get information about math, science, money, music. And you can also find a section for teachers and parents to help teach government sources to students and your children. There are, there's also games and videos, resources for all age groups. As you can see, there's K through 5, 6 through 8, and then there's information for teachers and parents. I just clicked on the uh, kids' uh, grade K through 5 tab, and I wanted to see what you would find with Learn Stuff. So and I clicked on the pre-designated boxes in the middle to learn the difference between Memorial and Veterans Day. Mm. That's what that screenshot is on the left. You can also choose subjects that were in the middle of the page to learn more about them to get information and resources. And that's the shot on the right. And again, you can see the different categories. There's art and music. There's history. There's a way to teach about online safety. There's exercise and healthy eating. So as you can see, you can pick either your topics there or you can do search as you saw on the main page there. Nice. So now let's talk a little bit about government and civic. 
This is Ben's Guide. Ben's Guide has been around for a very long time, um, but it's been redesigned within the last uh, couple of years, I believe. This site, you can get information for ages 4 through 14 and older. But if you want to learn about your government, how laws are made, how the president and Congress get elected, and facts about the United States, you can find that here. In addition to a lot of the information that you get, you can get games and activities for different ages and skill levels. This is just an example here. I wanted to put a plug for the Federal Depository Library Program since I am a federal uh, call myself a Fed Docs nerd. <laughs> I, wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to put a plug about the Federal Depository Library Program. Uh, the State Library is a Federal Depository li uh, Library and we are the regional for Indiana. What that means is that we collect 100 percent of everything that the federal government produces and publishes and we collect in every format. So. Wow. Just wanted to put a plug there. All right, back to the fun stuff. Ben's Guide. Here's some examples of some games. You can download and print crosswords. You can also print and download word search. On the right, there's the Branch of Mania game, and it teaches the three branches of government in a way that's interesting, in a way that'll hold their attention level. Here's an example of the learning adventures. Again, you can learn about the branches of government, how laws are made, um, songs, symbols, and structures. And there's a different uh, learning level here. You have the apprentice level, which are for the younger learners. And then you have the journey person learning level, which is for older kids. So it teaches the same thing, but it teaches them on a level that they can understand and they can relate to. The next site that we're going to talk about that teaches about civics and government is Kids in the House. And this site is provided by the clerk of the U.S. House of Representatives. You can learn the history of the U.S. government, get notable fun facts, and how laws are made. This site has information for young learners, for folks in grade school, middle school, and high school. There's something just about for everybody on this site. On the left, um, this is for middle and high school learners. On the left, you can get an interactive tour of the house chamber. Right. So if we're not fortunate enough to go to DC and take a look, we can look at it virtually. If you click on the little uh, magnifying glasses there, it'll uh, give you information about what it is and, and any, um, any other fact about what it stands for, how it was made. Oh, that's cool. Kim, yeah. actually, I had a, gr a group of students that came in one time to my, my previous library, uh -huh. and they didn't get a chance to go to DC, but they wanted to do an activity at their local uh. library. And this actually would have been a nice thing for them to do, is yeah. kind of explore you yeah. know, virtually and get a sense of, of to the tours and the buildings yeah. there in DC. So. Yeah, that would have been really cool. And there's also art and history on the right. Um, you can get information, little known facts about the Capitol. And for example, there's 250 paintings throughout the Capitol. You can also download coloring sheets and that you can print and you can decorate too from this site. Ah, so, coloring sheets. Yes. Always handy yes. for children's librarians. Yes, drop in crafts, folks. All right, next we're going to talk about sites about money and finance. And probably most kids do think that the money grows on trees anyway, right? So now we can <laughs> teach them how money is actually made and how to manage it. So the first site that we'll talk about is from the U.S. Mint. And the site teaches about money, how money is made, and the history of the U.S. Mint. If you're interested in coins, you can learn about coins from the United States as well as other countries. There are games and cartoons to make learning about money fun and less painful. The Mint has information for current and future coin collectors. 
So there's information for just about everybody. You know what, that would be neat. A coin collector program or anything with this website Ooh. would be good for Money Smart Week that yes. American Library Association exactly. does every spring. Exactly. That's a very good idea. So let's go over here just a few games that and some interesting interactive things that you will find on the U.S. Mint site. As I stated earlier, there's a lot of games to teach about money, teach about history, coins, and just things that are for fun. In this section, there's categories for action games, adventure games, art, puzzles, facts, collecting, and multiplayer games. For example, I clicked on the wishing well game just to see if my wishes would come true. <laughs> And Did I'm they? still waiting. I am still waiting. I keep Aww. waiting for that. I'm not rich yet, but I'm waiting. So the next category are the adventure games. As you can see here, there are um, Branches of Power, the Dollar Dive, the Quarter Explorer, Lewis and Clark Adventure. So if you're interested in adventure games, you can take a look at one of those. I clicked on the branches of power, and that is what I got. It's a dark, dark day <laughs> in Washington, D.C. And again, their, their <laughs> words, it was not mine. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> if you are interested in art, um, here are things that you can um, take a look at. There's the Painter's Studio, there's the Sense of Color, Pinkies, Create a Card, and Making Change. I played around with the Making Change one, and this is what that looks like. I decided that I wanted to make my own coin, and that is what I came up with. This is my finished product. <laughs> <laughs> Notice the mint mark uh, there in the right-hand corner. I chose I for Indiana. But as you can see, um, it, this explains what a mint mark is, actually. So this is another learning opportunity. And you can also choose your own mint mark. So you can make it your initial of your first name. I just chose I for Indiana. This is very otherworldly, Kim. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. And I very always cool. like to give my two cents. So this is what this is. This is my two cents. <laughs> So, and again, if you like puzzles, here are all the different puzzles that you can find on the site, um, from Lincoln Words down to Sudoku. Um, yeah. This page, it has um, everything about facts and coin collecting. The America the Beautiful Quarters game. There's the Arrows of Knowledge, Break the Bank. So again, there's something for just about every interest level. And then this is the example of the multiplayer games. More than one person can play and you can have a group of kids and want to play around. And as I mentioned earlier, there are cartoons. Who does not like a good cartoon? Um, talks about the birth of a coin, coins around the world, the time machine, uh, pal soon. So again, this is still learning, but you can learn in a fun way without kids actually think that they're being taught. Another site I want to talk about is Treasury Direct Kids. This site is from the Bureau of Fiscal Service and it teaches about debt, about bonds, the history of the treasury and games on how to save money. The little helpful quick links, it includes games also and ways to teach kids about money math. I clicked on the Art of Bonds tab. I just wanted to see what was available there. And this is what the link takes you to. It takes you to the posters that were published by the U.S. government to promote bonds. Savings bonds, of, as you know, were very popular and very common. Um, and this is what this next slide, this is what some of the older savings bonds looked like. Oh, cool. And you can show some kids have probably never seen savings bonds. Uh, maybe their parents or grandparents, great-grandparents, but maybe they've never seen them. You can take them to this site and show them what an actual savings bond looks like. 
here's an interactive history about savings bonds. You can click on any of the milestones to get information about the bonds and the time period. I chose 1942 to see what was happening then. There, as you can see, there was the war bonds poster. It was aimed at women. And it talks about what was going on during that time, about how they were trying to get financed for the war. So again, this is another um, interesting thing if you want to teach about our history as well, in addition to about money. Mm -hmm. You can learn about the history and about some of the wars and the great wars that were going on to help finance. Next category is health and fitness. And since Angela is here in the room, I wanted to put a plug that that is, happens to be the theme for the 2016 summer reading program, the collaborative summer reading program, is health, fitness, and play. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, so definitely a lot of good uh, resources here for your programming and services for next summer if you're going to use the CSLP manual. So the first one we want to talk about is Let's Move. And as you know, this initiative was started by First Lady Michelle Obama to combat obesity and encourage healthy eating and physical activity. On this site, you can get recipes, healthy tips, and resources, such as how to plant a garden. There's information here for parents, for schools, local officials, as well as kids. You can also check out contests like the Kids State Dinner and the Winning Lunch Recipes. And this is from young people all over the United States. Oh, fun. Yeah. But first, let's take a look at this link here, how to try a new fruit or veggie. And I like this because it talks about how to have fun with it and ways to get your kids to introduce new fruits and new vegetables into their diet. And as I mentioned earlier, this is another uh, initiative. It's the let's uh, from the Let's Move campaign. It's the state dinner contest, and this was an annual healthy lunchtime challenge that promotes cooking and healthy eating among young people all over the United States. The challenge invited kids from ages eight to twelve to join a parent or a guardian in creating an original recipe that was healthy, affordable, and delicious. One winner from each U.S. state, territory, and the District of Columbia was selected. And they were invited to attend the 2015 Kids State Dinner at the White House. The event took place in July of this past year, and 55 young chefs and a parent or guardian joined the First Lady for a healthy lunch, featuring a selection of the winning recipes, followed by a visit to the White House kitchen garden. Just uh, for your information, to the winner from Indiana. That's exactly what my question yes, was. Yes, <laughs> here's the winner from Indiana. Cool. She won, uh, Miss Abigail won, with her little man lunch, which is a turkey burger on a plantain bun, since her little brother is sensitive to wheat Aww. and gluten. Oh, yeah. Plantains for bread. Who yeah, knew? yeah. I That's never, cool. I never would have thought about that. But that is Indiana's winner. Very cool. Yeah. The next site is nutrition.gov. As you can see on the left, you can browse by subject, how to manage your weight, nutrition and health issues, how to shop, how to cook for meal planning, dietary supplements. And there's also, um, for your patrons, which is uh, somewhat helpful, if you need food assistance programs. Um, as you know, that there's a lot of um, the lunchtime, the uh, summertime initiatives where they are trying to make sure that kids do not go hungry during the summer months. Absolutely. But um, if you need something uh, before then, you can click on the link for food assistance programs and see if there's uh, what's available in your area. And in your library could even be a spot yes. for uh, the free summer lunch. That's right. That's right. So the next site is the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. On this site, again, you can learn about healthy eating, exercise, physical activity guidelines, and other tips and resources. You can also come to this page and get stories and inspiration by reading other stories about physical activities and how to fit 
physical activity into your routine, which we all know is kind of difficult sometimes. But And then here's just um, ways that you can be active and why it's important and useful resources. Cool. Okay. Our next section is going to talk about health, wellness, and safety. The first site is the CDC, or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, many people, we only think about the CDC when there's a public health crisis, like the bird flu, food right. recalls, and things like that. But they do have a page dedicated to the concerns and issues of young adults, such as uh, STDs, pregnancy, young workers' safety and health, and spotlights on special topics such as LGBT youth. Now, the CDC's Division of Adolescent and School Health, also known as DASH, it is a source of support for HIV, STD, and pregnancy prevention efforts in the schools. It provides funding and technical assistance and enables state and local education agencies to deliver HIV and STD prevention programs that are scientifically sound and grounded in the latest research. And this is a screenshot of DASH, the Division of Adolescent and School Health. I clicked on the Health and Academics link here to get a little information about the topic. And as you can see, it talks about healthy students are better learners, how schools can partner and help them help students for a healthy start. Over on the right there, there's resources there about bullying and absenteeism. Um, so that, I think that is very, um, very timely right there too, as we know that there's a lot of bullying in schools right now. So if you, if especially those who work in schools, this mm -hmm. would be very helpful for you if you want to use this as a resource. Yeah. I talk about the CDC when I do my teen development presentation ah, cool. and how it, it is yeah. a good source, absolutely. Yeah. So this site, too, is also by the CDC. It's BAM, Body and Mind, which is geared, I think, for little younger users. But you can see all the various topics here. There's diseases. Again, there's food and nutrition, physical activity, safety, your body. There's also, if you notice in the center there, there's bullying roundup, there's physical activity, there's the immune platoon. Over on the left, there's information for teachers. And you can also, there's games, and there's also there in the middle, scoop, and has information on various topics. Anywhere from fashion to how ads can make you feel mm -hmm. and about safety. So again, the CDC is, is really a good site um, to teach about how to be safe and how to avoid sickness and things like that. So our next one is education. And this is the Department of Education has information and resources for parents, for families, teachers, and young adults. You can find out current issues in education by reading their blog, and you can also learn about how to get money for college. You can also learn about colleges to find out which one has the degree that you, your patron wants or your child wants, and how to apply for that particular college. And this is just an example of one of the college resources. Um, this is a useful tool that you can use to compare colleges. You can do a search by location, by religious affiliation, by a specialized mission, location, programs, degrees, etc. So of course, we talk about education. We have to transition into jobs and careers, right? Because that's why we hopefully want to get an education is to get a very good job or a good career. This is USA Jobs. Now you can search this site to look for government jobs by a city or by college major. You can also do a uh, check for a list of government agencies and volunteer opportunities to get valuable experience before getting into the workplace. 
which we know that that is very important. Oh, this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So this is something to recommend if you, um, to suggest if kids are thinking about what kind of job or what kind of career that they want. This is a good place to start. You can click on any subject area and the Bureau of Labor Statistics, or you might hear it referred to as the BLS, it has suggested occupations that matches just about any interest. There's information uh, such as average salaries, any educational requirements, what skills that you need to have, et cetera. Nice that they have videos too. Yeah, yeah, I do like that. And this is the, um, and for possible careers, I clicked on the student resources tab and chose career exploration. So let's see what a typical librarian does and <laughs> how much a librarian makes. No giggles out there. <laughs> and this is uh, the Occupational Outlook Handbook. This is very handy. Again, you can use this to research the career, um, has your job outlook, educational requirement, and the salary. And you can see what librarians, what they say librarians do. And of course, we can probably add 20 other things to that section, as well as look at the education, our median pay, and on the job training, which I kind of disagree with that because I feel like there is definitely on the job training <laughs> as a librarian, yeah. But this is a good site. I don't, I'm being funny here, but this is really a good site uh, to get kids to think about what types of occupations and careers that they may be interested in and they can do their research about it. Mm -hmm. Next we want to talk a little bit about product safety and consumer protection. This is a site is the Federal Trade Commission and it protects consumers from deceptive or unfair business practices. The Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, keeps consumers can informed and helps us to understand the competitive process. You can learn how to spot scams, how to protect your privacy, and many other issues and concerns that might uh, be useful to help protect your money. So let's click to play a game here. Oh, this is the virtual mall, and here you can play games. You can design ads, you can chat with customers and store owners. And this part, and this is what I like, you learn key consumer concepts about how advertising can affect you, how you benefit when businesses compete, how and why you protect your information, and how to spot a scam. And what better place to do this than the mall, right? Right. <laughs> Each area of the mall focuses on a different topic. And to enter, you just choose an area. And since I'm always hungry, I chose the food court. <laughs> <laughs> and at the food court, you can learn about business competition. You learn about supply and demand, the history of the FTC, as well as mergers and monopolies. Mm. You can click on each business for a specific topic. Pizza, again, that's my favorite food, teaches how competition helps save you money. If you click on the creamery over on the right, it teaches about mergers and how they are sometimes bad for consumers. Mm -hmm. If you click on the Candy Kingdom, it teaches how companies come up with prices for products. And if you click on the cinema, you can see how business practices have changed over time. So as you can see, there's a variety of topics here that you can learn and, or teach kids about consumer safety and how if you see 10 Ben and Jerry's or 10 different ice cream places on one street, how that can affect them. Yeah. So we want to talk about libraries, <laughs> museum, and culture. And yes, this is how I walk through my library because I'm so <laughs> excited about it. And I have a library <laughs> card. <laughs> Woo. Woo. So the first one, obviously, we want to talk about the Library of Congress. And they are called the America's Library, and it provides a range of topics and information for, of, for people of all ages. You can learn about American history, famous Americans, the states, 
And there's also a site, read.gov, which highlights books and stories for young readers. And there's a couple examples here on the left. There's a game that you can play. And there's also on the right, you can, there's interactive history. You can take a jump back in time, teach them about history. And read.gov is part of the center of the book. It encourages reading and information for all levels. Read.gov presents a sampling of suggested books that will spark the imagination and transport readers to new and exciting places. You want to look for some of these books in your local library. Also wanted to talk a little bit about the Smithsonian. This is Smithsonian Education. As you can see there, there's information for educators, for families, as well as students. I clicked on the students page just to see what uh, kind of information that they would that they would see. And there's a lot here. You can explore by topic if you're interested in art, science and nature, nature history and culture, people and places. There's also Idea Labs. There's Smithsonian Kids. The Digging for Answers was pretty cool. I tried to play that game, but I got caught at work, so I had to stop. But <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, the Digging for Answers game is pretty cool. Um, it tests your knowledge of many subjects, and you can also play against your friends. So there's a lot of information and resources here that are that are really fun as well as educational. So next, let's talk a little bit about agriculture. This site is the USDA for kids. And this provides information for kids, for parents, and teachers about agriculture. You can learn about science, nutrition, gardening, nature, weather, and animal health. There are also games and fun facts and resources for just about all age groups. And if you want to learn a little bit about animals, for example, you can find out how many glasses of milk does a cow produce, how many stomachs do they have, all kinds of information here. And you can also learn about nature and environment here. And this is the National Enquirer. I like that. <laughs> you can get articles on scientific research conducted by scientists at USDA on nature, on trees, forests, oh, yeah, wildlife, outdoor activities, and water. The Natural Enquirer is a middle school science education journal. Science, scientists report their research in journals which enable the scientists to share information with each other. This journal was created so that scientists can share their research with middle school students. Each article will tell you about scientific research conducted by scientists in the USDA Forest Service. Oh, nice. Yeah. So this, is for, this section is for girls only. Sorry, guys, if there's any gentlemen out there, but this is for girls only. <laughs> but this is a pretty cool site. It's girlshealth.gov. It offers girls, young ladies, reliable, useful information on health and well-being. It covers hundreds of topics from getting your period to how to stop bullies, getting fit, and preventing sexually transmitted infections, infections and diseases. GirlsHealth.gov was created in 2002 by the Office of Women's Health, a part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I clicked on the link here for your feelings to see what kind of information and resources that, that are there. And again, notice the information here about feelings. There's information on emotions and feelings from happiness to anxiety. This can hopefully help open a dialogue with a young adult struggling with the emotions and feelings that come with being a teenager. Sometimes um, if you have a teenager or um, have seen them in action, it's just like, why am I being so insane? Why? You know, <laughs> this may be um, a good 
reference here to, to show them and also hopefully start a dialogue if they are feeling a little uncomfortable about how to talk about their feelings and why they feel the way they feel. Some, a lot of that's here. Yeah. And it also has quizzes, tips, and advice here. The next section teaches a little bit about crime. Not how to commit crimes. <laughs> Not how to commit crimes. <laughs> this site is the FBI. This site gives kids a history of the FBI, the types of jobs at the FBI, safety tips, and games. It's organized in two sections here. On the left, you'll see kindergarten through fifth grade. And on the right, you'll see middle school through 12th graders. There's a lot of information and resources for just about every grade level. I selected the middle school uh, grade section just to see what we came up with. And then I chose the How We Investigate link. And I wanted to find a little bit about how you investigate a spy. And as you see here, just kind of give some information about um, how to investigate a spy. Um, you can click on any of the other topics there about fake names, oh, cool. fake jobs, secret meeting times and places, signals, technology. So this is pretty interesting. I thought it was interesting and had a lot of useful information here to teach about yeah. the FBI. And a basis for a fun program. Yeah. You're, you're good. You're always thinking of the program. I, know, right? I like well, that. Know. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you want to find out how to be a special agent, you can take the special agent challenge. I do. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. So and here's some other notable websites. Um, NARA, the National Archives and Records Administration. They have a wonderful Doc Teach page, National History Day. Um, if you want to teach them about research, about how to research history, um, there's also the National Library of Medicine. And you click on search for the Visible Human Project. It has some really cool things about the human body and um, just how the body is made. And then finally, the U.S. Army Center of Military History. That is also a very good site, maybe for older kids if they're trying to do some research on some of past uh, conflicts and also military history. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. And at this point, that concludes my slide. At this point, if anybody has any questions or has um, anything that I said or they needed me to repeat, kind of look at again. Now is the time to open up for discussion. So Julia asked, will there be a clickable, um, like a web uh, webliography of all these links avail available for us? Ooh, very good. Um, what I will do is I will post this to SlideShare and you will have access to all the slides. Yeah, so the Indiana State Library has their own SlideShare account. You can go on SlideShare and see a lot of our presentations yep. there. So great. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Julia. Smiley face. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We see mm -hmm. some other folks typing, see if there's questions, or just saying thanks. Well, oh. thank you guys for attending. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, Julia. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, how do you get the space board game? Ah, very Ooh. good question. Um, again, if you are... Um, yeah, Evergreen Library or any patron that comes in, or you can actually, if you are in for the NASA board game, I think it's called Space Exploration. Cool. Yeah. 
So I would try to do an interlibrary loan search. Yeah. Would, we, would it be ca it's cataloged? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's at cataloged. The state library, so. Yeah. And the author, if you look at search for author, it's NASA as That's the author. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hope, tell me what you think of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss a question? Oh, um, a link to the webinars on, um, Julia, you're asking about the archived webinars. You mean the SlideShare account, I'm assuming? Um, or the recording. Oh, the recording of the archive. Yeah. Well, are we, are, are we are recording. Yes, we are recording this. Is that what you meant, Julia? Did you want the... No. Did you? So you don't mean today's recording, Julia? Do you mean the SlideShare account? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, Kim will. Yes, I will send the SlideShare link out to you. Um, actually, after sometime next week, when you get your LEUs, I will also give you the link to the SlideShare. Cool. Or if you're if you're planning something and you need that beforehand. Uh, before I can get it out to you, send me an email and I'll get that and just send the link out uh, to the, the SlideShare for you. SlideShare is a great website. It yeah. has great uh, great presentations and information on it. Yeah. We're happy to be able to use that as a resource exactly. for the State Library too. Exactly. Is there any other questions? Hope's typing something. Ah, great info. I know, Thank right, you. Hope? Kim's got a lot of great, great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brenda. You're welcome. All right, well, it looks like questions have died down. Um, if you do have any questions after today's webinar, you do have my contact information. So please feel free to send me an email or give me a call. Um, and again, if you need uh, the link to SlideShare before I can get it out to you, like I said, I'm hoping to get that out to you early next week. If something happens and you need it before I can um, make it available to you, just send me an email and I'll send you the link. But again, um, if there are no more questions, I again want to thank you for joining me today. Like I said, I know you could do a million other things on your Friday morning, so thank you for spending it part of it with me and Angela. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you.